I am Juliana. I heard someone call me. So I have come to answer questions. I really do not have a message except to say that I love this energy. Do you have questions for me? Starship. I am from the starship. It does not matter where I'm from, really. But I am from a starship. Are you the same as Giuliano? Yes. Yes. Did you have a question? Who, um, who requested? It is not important who I am, really. What is the question? Yes. Who? Was for her to come. Are you around the Earth? Yes. Is this the mothership that you're on? Yes. The captain? I am, yes, and but there is others with me. Mm -hmm. But I but I do take a leadership ability there, yes. Mm -hmm. And I do like to um, bring others into leadership training. And it is a lovely thing to be uh, with these people. I know that this is a different form for me. A different, it's a different atmosphere for me. You're Arturian? Yes. Mm -hmm. Oh, oh. And your role on the uh, mothership is? The whole mothership, the whole starship? I need, I have many roles. And I do many things, and I feel that my greatest role is to bring stabilization to all different things. Mm -hmm. And I bring uh, understanding where there is none. And I bring leadership where there is chaos. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I, I take apart the elements and put them back together. Can you speak some of your language, please? Yes. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> we are speaking about the fun things of the energy because there is a lightness in our words. The way that we speak has, we speak intention first before we speak what the message is. So therefore, we cannot be misunderstood because our intention is spoken first. To say that what she said was, my intention is to greet you so that I could not misunderstand when she said hello or whatever mm -hmm. in the tone of voice, whatever she would say, I understood it was a greeting. So what I said to her was my intention is to tell you that I enjoy how you speak the language. And therefore, we had a small conversation, very light, but very friendly with intention, with intention. What is it that you've learned about me? Um, well, I believe there's a connection. Yes. <laughs> so you recognize it? Yes, I did. And I don't think you coming into a human body is very normal. Not as, no, it isn't. I don't think you ever have, probably. Um, 
I have. I have, but it is not something I do normally. But I wanted to come today because there is an energy here that is of learning. And if I can teach something that is positive to someone, I feel it is worth coming. Mm. I, put, I take the elements apart and put them back together. So therefore, I take your elements apart and put them back together in a way that you can understand them. So if there's questions, I can take those elements and make them understandable. You see, where there is un where there is no information, then I can connect and make them into information. Is there Brian? questions out there? Brian? Yes, yes. Hello, my friend. This is Brian. Hello, Brian. Hello. Um, could you describe a little bit about who you are and how you are connected with Grukfuk Nier or any of the others? I, Grukvik Nier. Ah, it's a, a, a many-part question. and I have to take all the elements together, but <laughs> I could take many time, much time telling you the answer to this, but I will make it as short as possible. I am an Octorian. I <sighs> am um, on the ship. It has a name. You gave it a name. Well, the people. I've seen it. Of course, that's human. It's yes. the mothership. It is the mothership. Yes, but it is not oh. Grukfiknerian. The Grukfiknerian oh, yes. alliance is within themselves of five species. I myself am an ally, but not an part of the alliance. We have some differing understandings of how ascension should happen, and yes. so therefore. We believe that it should happen exponentially, of course. But I believe that their interaction with the weather can be a little non-beneficial. Let me explain. I think that the weather should be as it is, and I don't think the timeline will not exist. I think that it will continue to exist, but there would be a lot more fatalities. However, that's the way it was meant to be. However, my purpose on the ship is to bring enlightenment, to bring peace and harmony to those that want to have it, to those that are reaching for it. I will help supply it in one way or another. I am also beneficial for the people in my ship. I am sharing leadership, although I am the leader. I share leadership with many. But they report to me in the sense that not to write anything, not to bring me anything, but just to communicate <clears throat> right, right. what it is that we all should know. My question is, are because your alliance, you're kind of separate in a way, do you have the capability to bring humans to your ships? We have that capability, but we see where you are in this particular realm and time period, and it is not appropriate for us to do so. Okay. We have the Could you give a projection? Rule. Yes. <clears throat> Could you give a projection on how far in the future of our timeline that that may be possible? A probability. There are different speculations about this because of things that happen. Let me give you an understanding of this. One moment. There was some communication I had to relay. But yes, there is different speculations on the time that you will be able to come sight to sight. And the reason is, Different things can happen in the meantime before those speculative times. 
Now there's five speculative times and depending on the actions that come between that we will know which one will happen. But they will be within a period of two to four years. That soon? Wow. I kept, I kept thinking that it would be a good 15, 20 years. It cannot wait that long. That's what I was hoping for. I'm, I'm glad that it's not going to take forever. <laughs> we're very, as species, as humans, we're very impatient at times. <laughs> <laughs> but we, I love your energy, my friend. It's a very uplifting frequency. Much love to you. Much love to you. You see, it must happen sooner than 10 to 15 or 20 years. The reason why it must happen sooner is for the sake of ascension. The sake of ascension is so important. Yes. It, it takes so long for all the things of ascension to become awakened. Yes. There is not just one or two things that are part of ascension. It is many, many things that tele telepathy gives and takes and becomes. And it takes many, many of your earth years for it to become what it should be. So it's more of the DNA activating within us. It is more the DNA activating, but it is more... Also, the fourth dimensional energy not just being in the brain, not just being in the body, but being in the spirit. Yes, yes. It's almost like the spiritual, the manifested spiritual is kind of integrating with the physical more. Exactly. Ah, now I understand. It brings the spirit to the surface. Yes. It brings the spirit to a new place. I wouldn't call it the surface. Okay. But a new place, a new understanding, yes. and a new a powerful energy. It's a very the balanced spirit, energy. Yes. The spirit, you, everyone always says, oh, it's love and light and all these wonderful very light things, but the spirit is also many other things with depth and I with feel. sensibility and yes. will change the way you think, will change the way you perceive, will change the way you go about your third dimension without moving into a fourth dimension, will change your perception of third dimension. Right. I start to see a balance that comes with this, a great balance where the spirit's more at the forefront, then people realize they start to see the God within each other. I like the way you said that. Mm -hmm. Yes. We drag your the spirit along behind us sometimes. <laughs> it has There's to be at the spirit. forefront for the balance. There, you do not, you do not want to let your spirit move behind you, but come forth and move ahead of you, yes. and bring you along. Not push you. Right, push them all, right. And that is the way spirit works on your planet. Sometimes it <laughs> pushes you into things. <laughs> yes, but now it will lead you into yes. saying it leads you into the moment when people get yes. into the, vulner the vulnerability where they can truly ah. be the soul essence comes out. Do you see? The nows, the nows, the nows, yes. Yes. The they moment. are part of the now which just barely is in the future. They are in the future. Your spirit is actually in the future. I figured that. Yes. Your spirit is in the future. 
let it lead you to where it wants to go and not where you want to go because it has a purpose that builds Might the I purpose speak? within you. You are purpose. But let's look at that in the eyes of the spirit. It looks different. It looks different because it is the future different. Whereas you live in the now different. Yes. <laughs> Much love, my friend. I, I'll let another speak. Thank you. Ah, it is so fun to talk to you because you understand. And it, uh, it, it was just as you were saying, uh, to let the spirit lead. I often often think of the spirit also as the soul as well. Yeah. Um, and the way I see it is, the soul knows best, and it will often, as you say, push you and lead you into various things. And, you know, in my opinion, that should, you know, it's, it's a bit of a balance sort of thing, as, as, as it was said. Yes. Yeah. It does not always lead with love, though. That is a no. fallacy. No. That sometimes people think mm -hmm. it leads with purpose that is yes. connected to love. It is connected with love. It's connected with positive, but it does not always push forward that way. It may not be observed as being a loving action, but it is a necessary action because the, the soul knows its place in time, space, and responsibility. It is as I always tell people, my friend. The soul always remembers. Life is not a process of discovery. Life is a process of creation. Ah! <laughs> it is well said, because there is much truth there. Your creativity is there for a purpose. It is not just to hang around and make you feel good about yourself. It is not just there for to show somebody, look what I did. No. It reaches beyond that. It connects yes. with the world. Mm, yes. Everyone yes. should be connected with the world. And that is the where world. the soul relates, because the soul already remembers everything there is to remember. Mm -hmm. Yes. Behind the chakras, all the information of all your past lives, all the information of all your past lives behind your chakras. One chakra, if one chakra was more po prominent in one life, then that one is, will carry that life. And if another chakra was more prominent, it will carry that life. You understand those can be brought out of you to help you in your present life, but not necessarily. Mm. Not necessarily going to happen. Mm, indeed. But if you would like that kind of help, you can find it. <laughs> indeed. Of course, of course, of course. I'm kind of hearing you saying um, to have us let go of the free will just a little bit more and so that we can be guided by spirit. Well, <clears throat> You have to understand exactly what free will is. You can't let it go if you don't know what it is. Free will is everything that you are, really. It's even squeezing a pimple on your forehead. You can choose to squeeze it or you can choose not to. I'm not a big decision. However, it can be. What if it gets infected? Because you squeezed it. That's a different thing. A different outcome than just letting it heal on its own. And it would have gone away and you wouldn't have an infection and you wouldn't have to deal with it. So your free will interfered with the perfect healing process. 
that is just a small example of what free will is. Do you understand that? Now, free will is everything you do, taste, touch, do, want, experience, because you have free will to have a hamburger for lunch or a drink of water or a salad or a hundred different things. And you say, well, that's not important, but it is. Your health is important. So that hamburger might not be good for you, but the salad might be better. And that affects free will. Every small little detail of your life is free will. Everything. Everything you do. Do you think God sits up there and says, oh, let's see, for lunch today you're going to have this. No. God does not sit up there and say, oh, I think you should travel over here. No. You are the one that decides all these different things within you. Yes. So in order to understand free will is to, to understand that if you give it up, you don't do anything. So do not give up your free will, but let the Spirit speak to it. That's what I say. The spirit is in the future just a tiny bit and knows what you should do. But do not always listen to spirit. How can you listen to spirit 100% of the time? It is not something that you do. Because you are in third dimension, you are not in spirit. However, there are moments that are critical to your forward motion. And that's when you should listen to the Spirit. You should stop before you move forward sometimes. The future can be dangerous even if it's a second ahead. You might walk into a door or wreck your car or do something unusual within the next second. Crucial things happen in the next second that they, the spirit is ahead of. Have you ever avoided something that seemed very dangerous just by that one second ahead? Yeah. Many times. Do you think that's an accident? No. <laughs> spirit sees that second ahead and pulls you into now. May I uh, just mention something? I first say I want to say thank you so much for coming through. You are a blessed being and we love you very much. And I would like to know if succinctly on this topic would you call this uh, the power being in the present and the use of personal responsibility and personal growth. Would you really repeat that, dear? I, I did not quite understand that. Certainly. Yes. Um, I'm wondering if you would reference what you're discussing right now as being something called personal responsibility. Oh, it is part of it, yes very much a part of personal responsibility because you are making the decisions for yourself. And if you let, if you bring spirit into the part of that decision, then that is part, you are working together. Yes. You can work apart or you can work together. Yes. Spirit does not work separately from you, unless it is to save you. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I understand. Thank you very much. Yes, I understand your question very good. Yes, because the responsibility for each of us mm -hmm. lies on each of us. Mm -hmm. We cannot say, I am sorry, 
but it's your fault that I did this. It is not possible for them to reach into you and make you do something that you cannot do. If it is within you to do it, and you have done it, it is your responsibility to say that you have done it. Now you can say that you were influenced by something else, but still that influence is not to blame necessarily. It's how you accepted the influence. It's your responsibility. If you accepted that influence as an influence in you, then you are still responsible. If it resonated with you to do such a thing, then you have done it. Yes, yes. It's almost like it always comes back to self. It's your, the most powerful place to be is always in the moment, it seems like. Because you're you're taking command of who you are. Sure. Yes. Thank you for calling me here today. Can I ask another question? Certainly. Different topics in your natural form. What dimension? We are fourth. Yes. We're four. Well. Everyone has a different understanding of what dimensions are. Yes, it's a density. It's a some people call it fifth, some people call it fourth, some people call it sixth. The thing is, it, we all need to get on the same page about that. We all need to get on the same thought pattern about what the densities are. Everybody calls them different things, and with with one person, I'm in the fifth dimension. With another person, I'm in the fourth dimension. With another person, I'm in the eighth dimension, you know. But it, the, the thing is, it's not really that important what dimension I'm in. What is important is the, the message that comes across can be related to in the third dimension. So what my lightness or density is, Poof, it does it won't make any difference to you if I I'm a wisp of air or a solid monster that has three eyes. It doesn't matter. What does matter is the truth, the lightness, the love, the information. Those are the things that matter. The growth of your species into a new evolution of understanding. That is what's important. The natural form <laughs> is... Actually, I, if I explained what I look like, um, I'm sort of orangey. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not real tall. No. <laughs> um, there are some portions of our species that have small little horns, but the, not I. I don't have, don't have those. But <laughs> I'm female, so some of the males used to have small little horns in the past, but not anymore. Um, I'm bipedal, pedal, pedal, whatever word you want to use. Pedal, pedal, pedal. Not sure, but um. I, I'm not real pretty in your eyes, mm -hmm. but I'm pretty mm -hmm. to those that think I'm pretty. So you have a pretty voice. Mm. I have a pretty voice? Oh, what about you. your, your facial features? Like I have a big mouth. <laughs> so, in so many ways. But just a little <laughs> bit of Octorian humor there. But I have, I do have a rather large mouth, yes. And um, our eyes are smaller because we do have come from a bright, um, there's much light on our planet, so the eyes do not need to be as large. They take in a, a much light, and so our eyes are smaller than, say, those of Yu Yil 
who have large eyes because they're from a dim planet, or yours from you have moderate size eyes from a moderately sized sun. So the sun has a lot to do with how big your eyes are. So of course, makes sense, doesn't it? Yes. Um, just that's all there is to it. And um, we do not have a nose to speak of. There is one little hole, but it is protected. If we want to smell someone or something, we have to actually get close to it. The olfactory portion of our, um, what do you call it, evolution, because there is no unclean chemicals in the air for such a long time, it was not necessary for us to be able to smell poison or whatever on our planets because the air is so clear and clean. However, that's a bad thing whenever you go off-world because uh, the air is not so clear and clean and you have to use sensors and make it clean, sensors and technology to clean the air in front of you so that you can move. See, actually when we don't have helmets or things, we actually have a system that cleans the air directly in front of you and keeps it constantly clean. So therefore we don't have to have all, any kind of other technology other than the air cleansing that comes with us moving to other worlds or whatever if, if we can actually be in contact with it. So the, we can cleanse the air very easily with our little devices. But that is why we have no nose to speak of. Would the, is it, not that you gray, but is it the look it's kind of like a gray where you have a well, it's upside a, down triangle. Yes, it's short. Yeah. And then yes, that's very that's very good. You don't really walk. There's kind of a floating feeling. It's it's bipedal though. Yeah. Yes, we can float sometimes. Um, it's more of an orangey gray. Yeah. 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 Orangey. I, I the structure itself. Yeah, the structure itself is sort of yeah. unusual. Yes, you would say upside down triangle maybe, but um. Yes, but we do have two, we have legs and feet as well. So. But you don't need your body. I mean, I, um, we don't, we don't, it, it's, yes, we need it, but we, I understand what you're saying, yes. Mm -hmm. We do, we can move in other ways, yeah. yes. We do need it, though, for some things, yes. You're are you uh, now speaking uh, feminine versus a male? Or? Yes. Okay. Can we bring Giuliano? Uh, if he wants to come. Just wondering. Um, he doesn't really want to come, but um, he said you're doing fine as you are, so he said maybe next time. Thank you. But yes, I'm Juliana. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> are you part of a federation? Yeah. We are not. So is it only Arcturians? Of... Ooh, one at a time. <laughs> Sorry. Is it is it only uh, Arcturians or is it? Uh, well, I would say that the on ship. my yep. On this ship, there it is 90% Octorians. There are some, a couple other species that we have with us. Uh, uh, pets. There are a few pets uh, from other species. And there are a couple other travelers with us. We're taking them to their homeland. It's, we were, we're being used as a transport for a couple other different species, but they are not part of the ship membership, but they are, they are friends. It's a large ship, I'm assuming. Yes, it is a very large, ship. yes, very. It's like a biosphere. Yes. And you spend most of the time there, or do you actually go back to the planet? Where you well, you, we can transport back and forth, well, yes. I, I can go back to planet, um, we just call it planet. We can go back to planet and visit family or friends, or whatever. Um, yes, we often do. 
We often have our times where we need our our freedom and space as well. I mean, there is work and there is density and there is dimension and there is planet and there is family. And we are we are part of it all. Yes. In ah. Oh, what what is um uh, about um. Human years? Human years. Uh, uh, close to a hundred. That's it? That's it. Ooh. Yes. Ooh. We live a long time, but I'm only about a hundred. Giuliano is as well only a hundred? He's a little older, yes. He's a little older by at least 50 years <laughs> and your time. <laughs> That's it? Well, we'll see. I, I have to figure it out. Maybe I'm incorrect. What was the in, question here? Yes, in terms of uh, this is Sabrina. Um, Sabrina. In terms of <laughs> in terms of Earth ascension, how how are you helping us? Well, here I am. I know. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I sort of asked the obvious. Um. Um, no, but there is other ways. You are correct. I understand your question. We are working with other different, we work with Kruk Fiknir and we counsel those people that do this sort of thing and we counsel those that are interactive with the earth and so sometimes we give them advice that we feel is pertinent because we feel sometimes they overstep their boundaries. Okay, and in terms of that, um, there's there seem to have been sent uh, a wave of negative energy recently. Oh yes, I saw that. Actually, it's happened many times in the past year for your your higher dimensional people, higher fourth dimensional activation people. There's been a wave here and there of very negative energy causing great emotional stress at times. Some of you know how to fight it off and others of you do not. Um, you see, the way to fight it off is to pretty much ignore it at first. <laughs> uh, but it's hard to do because it is so strong. This last wave that hit the East Coast was very strong. And some people were left in a de in unable. What's the word? Disabled. Yes. Physically or emotionally. So emotionally, and which caused physical as well. So but some people yes. that have reached beyond the fourth dimension into some fifth dimensional realms were sort of protected because the fifth dimension can be touched. But the fourth dimension could, and so could the third, of course. So, so how do we protect ourselves if we don't know that that's what's happening? Um, well, we're trying to protect you. You cannot protect yourself, really. Uh, we have to protect you on this level. When it's that high, there's not much you can do to protect yourself. We must help you protect, you. and we send we send as much. <laughs> energy right afterwards as possible for those to recover quickly but it is not much you can do really it's my understanding that yeah you're because not it so was much involved with the Pleiadians and all that are fighting you know the no 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 your job is the the ascension of yes. the consciousness and the corridors and the corridors yes and, and we take care of stargates and portals and and that sort of thing. Yes, we have people on Earth that do that for us as well. We do have messages through different species that give people the awareness of where portals are and to activate them or charge them or do different things of that nature. But not the fighting. You know, we do not do any of the fighting. That is not something that rev resonates with us at all. We do not resonate with conflict of that nature. We do resonate with conflict of the spirit and the body and things of that nature because it is a growth process. 
Some conflicts can be growth process oriented. However, conflict of a warlike nature is not growth process oriented at all. Just the opposite, in fact, most of the cases. But the wars are being fought now yes. between the Dracos and all that wonderful stuff in the solar system. There are many things, many, uh, there are many, many wars in many different dimensions. It's amazing to, I'm sure it's amazing to you in third dimension that there are wars in other dimensions. But it is because you, each of us, every single spark soul is different and has a different purpose. And if that purpose goes astray, it can... It can be fighting with itself, which causes it to start fighting with others, which causes others to fight back because it causes the conflict. It's, it's, it's just like the ascension. It's a wave of uplifting. There can be a wave of down. If you so connect the, with, if you can connect with the, the wave, it's some, it can affect you. So, but your decisions, your responsibility is to try to avoid that, of course, but it's not always easy. It is so not just always because possible. you're in a higher dimension, it doesn't mean that that there are no wars? If, if there was nothing negative in any other dimensions, being in another dimension would have no meaning. Do all Let universes have that? Of course. You must be able to appreciate what life, otherwise it becomes meaningless. May I speak? Sure. Um, from what I've learned and from what I'm continuing to learn, there can be no light without a dark. And there can be no dark true. without light. Yes. And it is something I have always aspired to follow. See, I, I walk a very, very middle path, if you will. Um, I seek to bring balance in accepting both points of view, because really there are both points of view in yes. each and everything that we go through. Yes. Like, just as I said about the soul, it's not all love and light. It's not all positive energy. There's part of it that the only way it can exist has a t some dark energy in it. So it's what all do you about think holds the universe together? Dark energy. Yes. Mm -hmm. Dark and energy see, holds the universe yeah. together. Absolutely. And see, and what I've been taught is, you know, and I, like I said, most of the information I've been taught is. From, I consider it from source itself, but of course there are many forms of source. Um, yes. But what I have been taught is that, you know, there is what is called the realm of the relative, the realm where there is good, there is evil, there is love, there is fear, and all of these things. And I believe that goes for all sorts of the, the dimensions. Is that correct? Yes. For, the, for the, it to exist. There ha it has to be polarized in some way to hold it together. Does that make sense to you? Indeed. Indeed, yes. Then we don't exist anymore? Is that what you're saying? You exist only in. Only in, no. You exist. That's enough. That's enough. Okay, so when we're at the all, there is no more of that duality. There is, it's, it's a place where you are totally at peace, but you don't have to stay there. But you go there to be totally at peace. And when you leave there, you take that essence with you, and it's like radiation. It, it slowly dissipates throughout the universe. Mm -hmm. Do you understand that? Absolutely. She asks if you were at source, would you cease to exist? And the answer is no. 
at source, you become who you are fully in source. You become totally at rest and at peace, but you do not have to stay there. You can move away, and as you move away, your, that peace slowly moves out through the universe with you. It dissipates like radiation from you, but it does not mean that you're not still at peace. <laughs> You can go back into duality, yes. So can can the soul feel all the different energies, uh, um, um, emotions, um, like we do? I yes, of course. So it's capable of, of feeling hatred also. Of course, because it has to understand what it creates, and what is created by the things that create. It has to understand that. So, it, yes, of course, it has to feel everything and know everything that it is to know so that it can understand what it has created when it, and what it, its creations have created. Because his creations or her creations or its creations, however you want to say sources, um, has created other things that were not created by source, but were given the capability to be created by source. Juliana, if we wish to receive energy from you and from the Arcturian Collective, what would be the best way of doing this or going about this? Speak Arcturian. Oh, see, you're finishing each other's sentences now. It's, it's a wonderful thing. But anyway, yes, no, actually, just call upon us. Just call Juliana. I have a sensor on the earth. We all do. There are so many sensors on the earth right now. You would think that you would be feel like you're being probed constantly. But <laughs> it does not work that way. I guess. But, um, not that kind of probe here. But, um, I know. I know. <laughs> But the thing is, there's, there are many probes coming to the earth and you cannot s feel them or sense them, but your governments know that they are there. And they are constantly coming and they, it makes them a little bit edgy, but they're learning to live with it. Are you working with any of the, um, the leaders, whether it's Russia, America, in the I? You, you and Giuliano specifically, and who would that be? What country would that be? We are not working specifically with one entity on Earth, with one particular okay. area of the Earth, mm -hmm. but we do pop in and send messages to certain people at times. Mm -hmm. And the messages that we send are very peaceful, mm -hmm. but very informative in the sense that... Um, We'll tell them that they what they should not do sometimes and why, but it's up to them to understand why we sent it. So you stay in the background more, much like Putin would be given information from other groups of aliens. Um, you know, yes. So you're more the background. You're really well. Well, it's hard for me to answer that question because yes and no. We are in the background, yes. We're not in the background, yes. Um, um, but I can't elaborate on that without giving away some things that you are not to be known at this time because we promised that we would not elaborate on certain things. So we are in the foreground, yes, and we are in the background, yes. Is there a great influence with you with JFK? JFK. Oh. Um, he was taken for a reason, yes. No, I mean during his, his uh, presidency, it was communication. We, we communicated with almost every president. Okay, not more. So, so. We communicated <laughs> with some more than others. Okay. I can give you that. Did Jesus have Arcturian in him? 
<laughs> I think I understood that question correctly. Um, he has a little bit of everything in him at this point. Jesus has a little bit of everything in him at this time. When he was on your earth, he had not a little bit of everything in him at that time, but he had more source in him than normal, which gave him a little bit of everything. Let's put it that way. Juliana, this is Rowie. I have a question. Uh, since the Arcturian race has been around for such a long time, what would be yours, or maybe give an example, of your favorite or most cherished moment of the creation of humanity on Earth? My favorite moment. That is a hard one because there are many favorite moments. I have many favorite moments. I have many favorite moments. Um, to see the enlightenment, the first enlightened human was one of my greatest moments because they took things to a different level and people respected that and they began to understand that beating people over the head and killing animals for just sport was not necessarily something that they wanted to do and the reasons why and and um, brought that slight spark of evolution to their people around them. Another part of you, the things that I really enjoyed about Earth was seeing it in its very early foliage stages where there was very little there but some growth and plants and the air was thin and and there was there was just a sea of molecules and protozoa and it was very inspiring it was like watching a moving painting do you understand that it was like watching a moving painting the different colors were would mesh and move and be malleable and ah, coordinating and harmony. It just was a wonderful thing. I wanted to get, I wanted to just jump in, but of course that was not possible. Oh, many blessings for sharing that. That was that was beautiful. Thank you, Sharon. Yes. Well, do you want to ask a question? <coughs> I will. Thank you, Sabrina. Hello, Juliana. I call my name Sharon. I call myself Sharon. <laughs> Hi. Sorry. And I, I understand that uh, you said that you can help with energy, realigning energy. And I was explaining yeah. to someone earlier that I'm feeling really chaotic today. I have a lot of decisions coming up, and I'm sure that everybody has their own. Um, I was hoping you could send out or send out some energy for realignment ah, let, or inspiration. Let, oh, let me tell you this, dear. I can take. You see, confusion is chaos. The same as chaos is confusion. Confusion and chaos are very similar. Chaos is actually more, a little more dense and uh, moves a little faster. However, in the mind, uh, confusion is moving back and forth between different things and different understandings. Let me tell you how to do that. You take these different things and you write them down. They're all separated. Separate them. Separate them. Separate them. Separate all those thoughts. Put them on a piece of paper, whatever you want, on a piece of computer, whatever it is that you do. Separate all those thoughts. And then you can see them. And you know what? You've taken chaos and you've put it in a straight line. And now when you look at the straight line, you can do a resonation on each one of them. Each one of those separate thoughts has its own resonation. 
Ah, you do not look happy with that. But the understanding is not all resonations that are unhappy are the wrong resonations. But you will resonate what they are. You will resonate if they are the right choice, even if you do not like it. And I see that there is a choice that you really do not like, but you think that you are going to have to take. Is that not right? There's a choice. Yes. There's a resonation that is like, oh, what is the word? Shit. Shit. <laughs> oh, is that the word? <laughs> um. Oh boy. <laughs> I I understand the word has many meanings. So yes, okay. But anyway, oh manure, yes, or dung heap, or whatever it is. It's um. It may not be pleasant. It may not be pleasant, but the outcome eventually will be for the right, the good, the, the thing that will be what you are shooting for, what you are wanting to go. Sometimes to get to the other side of the lake, you have to swim it. Or you can get a boat. If you know how to build a boat. <laughs> You either build a boat and go across it, or you swim it, or you walk across if it's shallow. But sometimes going across looks daunting. Looks like not the kind of thing that you want to do right now. Fearful. But yet over there, there's the coconut trees and the pineapples and everything that, you, that will help be helpful. Do you understand? Yes, thank you so much. I love you very much, and I understand what you're going through. The choices, but do me a favor and do separate those choices. And look at them singularly, because right now they're just jumbled up together. They're like, you, they're separate, but they're still connected. You have to separate them. Prioritize. Prioritize. Is that the word? Yes. Yes. All right. I must go now. It was interesting to be with you. I enjoyed it. Ah, did someone else have something to say? Yes, I had something. Hello. Yes. Hi. First off, I wanted to send uh, my love uh, to you. And thank you. I had a question. Um, what world? What? Did that come what? through? Um, it did not right come there. through. Your my voice ceased and then started. My question is, what are the females like on your world? Um, well, understanding who you are, which I do, we would probably be cumbersome mates. We are not, we would not fit together well. Uh, you would probably have to turn me in my head. We are of a triangular shape, but the greater part of the triangle is on top. So it's, I'm trying to send you a little bit of an image. Um, yes. But... Yes, you are definitely much more well formed in some ways. Are you slender? Not really. The top part is not slender. The bottom part is more slender. 
it's interesting. We keep a lot of biological things on the top part so it's safe. We can control how that is moved. But on the bottom part, we're not so much safe because if we float at times and move, we do not always use the legs. So they're not as strong as yours. I would love to see an Arcturian. <laughs> yes, well, <laughs> perhaps for you it would be comic relief and others very frightening. No. Well, of course. Well, well, I will say this for you know, I'm totally blind, so really, it, it wouldn't really matter to me. So, yeah. <laughs> it, but you see, in your spirit form, you may be able to see because the spirit is pretty, sometimes perfect. Unless there's a reason for you to to not be able to see in spirit, you should be able to. Well, see, I was in this life. I was born with a disease called septo-optic dysplasia. In the physical body, is where the optic nerve is not entirely as developed as it should be. Ah. And crazy. so, yeah. yes, yes. And so that's why I am uh, totally blind in this life. So yes, the spiritual eyes are indeed enhanced, as well as are the you? hearing and the sense of smell and taste and whatnot. Ooh, that's an interesting thing. I could have a very interesting conversation about all the other senses with you. But and <laughs> <laughs> indeed, <laughs> indeed. Could, could he see in in the astral if he went? That is what I'm saying. There is a possibility that that is a correction that would be made by the astral body, since that is something of a human defect. Yes, yes, it is. Um, I, it's, it's just the only problem is I have a hard time astral projecting consciously, but learning in the process of doing it's it. all so. right. Your time will come. Your time will come. I have no question of that. I feel that your other senses have been amplified. Is that a good word? Amplified. Yes. yes. And that... Your sense of understanding, even your brain amplification, has been quite unique. Yes, it is. Very. Yes. Your uniqueness in brain function is lovely. I love it. It is actually advanced. So that is a nice thing. Yes. Well, I, I don't know. I mean, all of my life, this life... Uh, well, of course, my human mother's always told me I had a photographic memory, but I never really took much heed into it. I just it, it came very, very natural to me, and uh, you know I never quite I, I I never boast about anything about myself. So so, but uh, but but yes, um, I've yeah. done a lot of things that have had to do with the brain. You know, uh, worked with computers all my all my life. This life, I'm working with everything. So yes, anyway. <laughs> Yes, I see that work that has been done. Also, that there has been some things that have been enhanced because others have helped you a little bit. But that is a wonderful thing. I love that. Yes, indeed. Very good. Uh, I must go now. Has, I said that all right. already before. Thank but you for I coming. Didn't say. Um. You are very welcome. I am. I'm having a good time, but I need to go run the ship. So okay, uh, the they're ship. calling me back, saying, "You said you were coming back. Where are you?" Ha ha ha. So um, do you know Tatuli? Thank you. What? Do you Over know that? Uta, Do you know Uta Tuli? Yes. Oh, can you say hello to her for me? Wait one moment. Tita ka ta ta. It has been done. Thank you. And have a wonderful day. What a. Yes. Much love.
Much love. Blessings, Juliana. Thank you so much. That Thank was you. Such a wonderful experience and much awaited. Thank you. Thank you, Juliana. Connections. Connections. Yes. Also connections. Mm -hmm.